thousands have taken to the streets, uh, echoing Tlaib's hateful, uh, virulent anti-Semitic rhetoric. And sadly, these rabid anti-Israel riots are getting worse. And so are the chants from the protesters. Take a look at what they were screaming outside of Joe Biden's White House this weekend. Allahu Akbar. Sound familiar? Yeah, those were words echoed by uh, some of the pilots on 9-11-01. The propaganda being disseminated to justify Israel's genocide in Gaza keeps getting worse. So we just heard Sean Hannity, an actual religious person himself, clutch his pearls over the phrase Allahu Akbar, which literally just means God is greater in Arabic. It's used in greetings and in prayer, and we all know that if that were being chanted in English, he would have no problem with it. But because Palestinian protesters are chanting it, well, the goal is to prime people to think that they, Muslims chanting that presumably, are not just pro-Palestinian peace activists. They're either terrorists themselves or terrorist sympathizers. So you should be very afraid when you hear the phrase, Allahu Akbar. He is preying on people's ignorance. And the same propagandistic bullshit is being pushed by Israel as well. For example, Israel's official Twitter account shared this cringeworthy satirical video making fun of college students in America. Hi everyone, we are live on YouTube with Columbia Yantisemite News. We're Everyone is welcome. LGBTQH. H. Hamas. <laughs> yeah, I'd totally sim Hamas. Yeah. It's so trending right now. From the, the river, river to, to the, the sea, sea Palestine, Palestine will, will be, be free. free. Do you know why it's true? Mm. Because it rhymes. <laughs> Just look at all this toxic Zionist propaganda. Kidnapped in Gaza? Does this look like Gaza to you? Yeah, bro, I have no idea what Gaza looks like. And they're smiling. Do hostages smile? Sinist liars. Totally sus. Do they think we're stupid? Stupid? I major in queer post-colonial astrology. That was absolutely beautiful. But I would honestly only give his caricature of a gay man 6 out of 10 because he's just too stiff. I need to see way more sass, more limp wrists. I mean, if you're really going to go for the stereotype, go all out. But I mean, the message there is clear, right? If you are against Israel's war crimes, you're effectively supporting Hamas, which is the same message that Sean Hannity was pushing in that clip that you just watched. But that is more overt propaganda. Um, there's also a lot more insidious propaganda that that we're seeing that's being pushed as well. For example, the Israeli prime minister spokesperson to the Arab world shared this video on Twitter and alleges that Palestinians are fooling the international media and public opinion. Don't fall for it. See for yourselves how they fake injuries and evacuating injured civilians all in front of the cameras. Hollywood gets busted again. Now, the problem with this claim is that, as the Community Notes points out, this is a behind-the-scenes shot from a Lebanese film, not Palestinian crisis actors. But the goal is to get you to doubt the authenticity of actual war footage coming out of Gaza so you don't start to sympathize with the victims of Israeli war crimes. You instead think, mm, this can't be real. It's got to be fake. They want you to give in to the cognitive dissonance. Now, it's incredibly Orwellian. It's gaslighting, it's gross, but this is how propaganda works. The problem, however, is that for the first time perhaps ever, the pro-Israel propaganda is failing. 66% of Americans support a ceasefire and tens of thousands of people around the world have marched in the streets also demanding a ceasefire. And the reason why we're seeing this paradigm shift is because the raw footage that we're seeing from Gaza is just so much more powerful and potent than their gaslighting, than their propaganda, which is why they're trying to get you to doubt it. But as their propaganda continues to fail, their desperation becomes more and more evident. So let's go back to Sean Hannity, because he's going to predictably push the idea that all of the people concerned about Israel's indiscriminate bombing of Palestinian civilians, uh, they're all sympathetic to Hamas, and they're also anti-Semitic. And former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett tries to bolster this narrative too, as you're going to see but there's a fatal flaw with his entire segment, and I'm pretty sure you're going to spot it. But if not, I'll point it out afterwards. We have seen, you know, from the river to the sea, we've heard that. 
I never thought I'd hear the words gas the Jews, F the Jews, and all this virulent anti-Semitic rhetoric in the United States, on college campuses, in the halls of Congress, and worldwide. Um, I've never been one to use Nazi analogies, but this sounds eerily like the 1930s to me and all that I've learned in history. I, I had no idea that this level of hatred existed. What is your reaction to it in the 30 seconds we have? Sean, me neither. I never imagined that on the ground of the United States of America, we'd hear people chant effectively, kill the Jews, because that's what from the river to the sea uh, means, because that's where the state of Israel is. But there is a response. There's one way to do away with all this anti-Semitism in America and our war with uh, uh, Hamas, and that's total victory on Hamas. Defeat them, hit them, kill the terrorists, and by doing that, this whole thing will uh, change. So in the first clip, Hannity said that thousands are echoing Tlaib's virulent anti-Semitic rhetoric. And in the clip that we just watched, he said it even sounds eerily similar to the 1930s. And he had no idea that this level of hatred existed in America. Now, anti-Semitism and bigotry and racism has always existed in America. Anti-Semitism is very real, and it's a growing issue, not just here in the United States, but around the globe. And I have no doubt that anti-Semites are using outrage towards Israel's war crimes to spread hate and blame all Jewish people for the crimes of the Israeli government. Now, in the same breath, there are also bigots that are trying to blame Palestinian civilians for the crimes of Hamas. All of that is wrong. The Islamophobia, the anti-Semitism, and wherever we see this, wherever we see bigots trying to exploit tragedy to push hate and anti-Semitism, I think we should unequivocally condemn it. But the problem is, as Sean Hannity generalizes all protesters, the images that he's showing you of the protesters that he's demonizing as anti-Semitic, well, they're saying something completely different than he tells us they're saying. Ceasefire now. Gaza will be free. Genocide Joe has got to go. Free Palestine. Another free Palestine. End the siege on Gaza. Free Palestine. End illegal apartheid occupation. More representation for Palestinians. And also, end all USA to Israel. End US funding to Israeli apartheid. This is not war. This is genocide. Now, there's more, but you get the point. You can scrub the video if you want. All of these signs are calling for peace. They're calling for a ceasefire. And in his effort to portray all protesters around the country and around the world as terrorist sympathizing anti-Semites, well, he ends up inadvertently promoting their message. He ends up getting their message across, platforming them. So that in and of itself is an embarrassing propaganda fail. But there was something that he said in that second clip that really struck me. And I already referenced it, but I want to go back to that. So he said he had no idea that this level of hate existed in America, which is so shocking to me because, I mean, was he asleep when this happened? Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! He had no idea this level of hatred existed until he saw protesters with posters that said Free Palestine. What a fucking hack. Now, Hannity can feign ignorance all he wants, but he is very much aware of the Charlottesville March. And to his credit, at the time, he did unequivocally denounce them. He denounced white supremacy and neo-Nazis, but he also both sides did. Now, I decided to go back and take a look at his coverage, and uh, I found it incredibly ironic, and you'll see why. Over the weekend, we saw the Destroy Trump establishment media go into a feeding frenzy, trying to assign blame as quickly as possible, and of course, to paint the president, all conservatives, all Republicans, as racist and bigots. That's not true. These are the exact same tactics we see by the left every two and four years during the election cycles, and we'll have more on that in just a minute. President Trump is not a racist. Conservatives, the conservatives I know, like, and love, Republicans I know and like, they're not racist. But all we heard all weekend long from the left, the mainstream media, is that these extremists in Charlottesville this weekend somehow represent all conservatives, that the president supports them. He does it. All Republicans. And they attack the president again and again and again. 
But all weekend long, the lying media, they were trying to convince their viewers that President Trump was somehow sympathetic to these white supremacists. So he was mad that the lying media, which definitely doesn't include him, by the way, tried to insinuate that all Republicans were sympathetic towards the Charlottesville Nazis. And uh, now, fast forward to 2023, and he's doing the same exact thing he accused the media of doing back in 2017. He is cynically invoking anti-Semitism to demonize people calling for a ceasefire after he downplayed the anti-Semitism problem in the United States within the Republican Party back in 2017. He both sides did. Very, very despicable. I think it demonstrates that Sean Hannity is a bad faith actor, not just any bad faith actor, like the worst bad faith actor in the country, literally. Now, I've got one more clip that I want to play for you uh, because it's going to highlight a different propaganda tactic that he's going to use. So in the first clip, you saw him reference 9-11. He then went on to justify Israel's war crimes by making an appeal to emotion using, you guessed it, 9-11. For the life of me, I do not understand the United States of America. Israel stood strong with America post 9-11. You guys never wavered, ever. And here, this is the worst terror attack in Israeli history. And we have an American president and administration pressuring Israel to put a pause on defending your homeland, defending your country. The propaganda is just so fucking bad. Now, first and foremost, it is true that the Biden administration has been tepidly pushing for a humanitarian pause in response to the public outcry for a ceasefire, and they actually just announced a four-hour pause per day. But understand, that is not the same thing as a ceasefire. As Owen Jones puts it, this isn't humanitarianism. It's repulsive PR management for a massacre. And that is exactly correct. It's a way to make it seem like he's doing something as his public support hemorrhages, when in actuality, he's not even doing the bare minimum. In fact, he refuses to do the bare minimum, which is to call for an actual ceasefire. Now, yes, it's true that Israel doesn't have to listen if Biden calls for a ceasefire, but he's not calling for a ceasefire. In fact, here's his feelings about that. What a complete fucking piece of shit. None, no possibility. Now, before that, John Kirby reiterated that the White House isn't drawing any red lines, meaning that Joe Biden is still complicit with Israel's genocide of Gazans. And after 10,000 Palestinians have been massacred, including 4,000 children, Handy has the audacity to claim that Biden is actually doing too much to pressure the Israeli government. I mean, what a twisted fucking world that we live in. What a deluded individual Sean Hannity is. Now to my second point, Hannity's appeal to emotion is terrible propaganda because America's response to 9-11 in part is why so many Americans are averse to the idea of war and U.S. support for wars. You all fucked up by being so militaristic, lying so much to us that now we question every single thing that you do with regard to foreign policy because after you lied about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, which is why you wanted to attack them, well, why should we ever believe you again? Now, in response to 3,000 Americans dying on 9-11, our government murdered a million people in the Middle East who had nothing to do with the 9-11 attacks. So crying about how Israel stood with us as we committed atrocities, therefore we should stand with them as they do the same, that's not persuasive. Reasonable people learn from that. But Hannity is not a reasonable person, so of course he wouldn't learn from that. He would make the same mistake because he has a thirst for blood that can never be quenched. A million people could die, 10 million people could die, he would still advocate for more wars in every country. In fact, in that same interview, Hannity made the case for expanding the war and got Naftali Bennett to agree that Iran is also a problem as well. So they kind of described an octopus, right, with Iran being the head and Hamas and Hezbollah being the tentacles and other militant groups being the tentacles. In other words, we should just do a repeat of the war on terror because that was definitely successful. Listen, the days of politicians and pundits using tragedies to justify their gross militaristic ambitions are over and their propaganda is no longer compelling to most people because it's lazy, it's cringeworthy, and not to mention Americans and people around the world are waking up. So I fully expect their propaganda to get even worse as time goes on, but it's not going to change a damn thing. Americans are seeing what our tax dollars are funding in Gaza, and no amount of concern trolling and emotional manipulation and gaslighting is going to get them to consent to these war crimes.